Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we'll be understanding everything about the medallion architecture. And of course, the best practices for getting your data from the raw state to the business insights that you are always looking forward to. We will talk about the overview of the medallion architecture and also look at the bronze layer. That is the raw ingestion, the silver layer, what you also call the validation and the cleansing layer. And we'll be talking about the gold layer. That is the business ready data. We'll also look at an example of a medallion architecture. And finally, we'll talk about best practices as recommended by Databricks and Microsoft. Please like and subscribe to get more of this and stay updated for future videos. Let's get to the main question. The question is, what is the medallion architecture? Before I answer that, let me give you some context and maybe have a quick trip through the history of data management and engineering. Because when you understand how we got here, it helps to set the stage for why this architecture is very, very important and why businesses have adopted this as how they will frame their data architecture going forward. In the early days of computing, data was stored on punch cards and magnetic tapes. What happened was these systems were large and very, very cumbersome and it made engineers to often wrestle just to impute and retrieve data in its simplest form. The introduction of relational databases in the 1970s allowed businesses to organize data in tables and query, and query it in SQL and it helped to pave the way for data warehouses in the 80s and in the 90s. What these warehouses did was that it helped to centralize very, very vast amounts of structured data and supported robust business intelligence. But when you now come down to the 2000s, that is where you start having the rise of big data. It was really, really fueled and influenced by social media and you had the likes of Google, Facebook and all of the social media network. And this led to or start talking about tools like the Hadoop for handling massive or structured data sets, though they introduced challenges in performance and schema management. When you leave the 2000s and uh, you start coming to the 2010s, and we saw a rapid increase in cloud computing, and Apache Spark started revolutionizing um, both batch and real time processing. Data Lakes emerged, and we started hearing about Data Lake and how it's a flexible, low cost storage solution for variety of format, but the problem was that it often lacked the governance necessary to maintain consistent data quality. Um, that was the problem with data lakes. Now coming to today, businesses need a structured progressive approach to ingest, clean and enrich data before presenting it to the analysts who will be working on this data or making decisions on the data. And that's where the whole medallion architecture comes into play. It's a multi-layered framework, really, really designed to ensure data quality, which is key and kind of solving the problem of the whole data lake. First, let me kind of give you an overview of what the medallion architecture is. The medallion architecture is a term that was coined by Databricks. It's actually a data design pattern used to organize data logically. The goal of this is to incrementally and kind of progressively improve the structure and quality of data as it goes from the bronze, the silver, and the gold layer tables. Don't get this confused um, because if you're hearing this for the first time, you hear the bronze, the silver, and the gold. Um, these are terminologies that could be confusing. I'm going to be expanding on this as we go on in this video. But just to say that the bronze layer is usually the raw layer why the silver layer is the validated layer or the layer people call the clean layer and the gold is the enriched or analytics layer. Each of this layer have specific job they do and at each stage in the data's journey, um, they progressively refine and improve the structure and quality of this data that you have um, for it to be very, very readily available to the downstream sector for use. Let's talk about the first one, the bronze layer. This layer is where data from various sources like Kafka or Salesforce or just any cloud storage. Um, this is the layer this data arrives in its raw form. And just think about it like you have in your laundry basket where you put in all of the used clothes um, in just the raw state. You've not cleaned them, you've not ironed them, you've not done any laundry on them. The bronze layer try to contain that very, very raw, unvalidated data. Data ingested in the bronze layer typically has um, these characteristics. 
First, it contains and maintains the raw state of the data source in its original format and it's typically appended incrementally and grows over time. One of the intended use is that it is intended for consumption by workloads that enrich data for the SIVA tables, not for access by analysts. Um, so this is not where the data analyst or data scientist should come and pick data from. It's just raw. And again, it enables processing and auditing by retaining all historical data. And it can be a combination of streaming and batch transaction from sources, including cloud storage like S3 Bucket, ADLS, and also federated systems like the Lakehouse Federation. In terms of usage, I've kind of mentioned that already to say that this layer is mostly used by the data engineers, data operations, and the audit teams, and not necessarily the data scientists or the data analysts. But when you come to the SIVA layer, it's quite different from the raw layer. Once data is ingested, it kind of moves to the SIVA layer where you start addressing um, the data quality issues within your data. And to build the SIVA layer, data is read from one or more bronze layers or even sometimes is even read from other SIVA tables and is now written into the SIVA table, the target SIVA table that you're working on. So what happens at the SIVA layer? The first is most times from the raw, you have the duplication of data. And the SIVA layer is deduped, so the duplication of records to avoid multiple entries of the same data. You also have the schema enforcement and typecasting, and this ensures that each of the field is consistent across board. And for different use cases, you could also need to join a merge dataset, um, such as combining customer details with transaction logs um, for a comprehensive view if you need to and you have the data standardization that happens here and that is where you try to handle your no values or quarantining um, the erroneous records that you have within your data set and in terms of usage on this SIVA layer um, it's mostly used by the data engineers as well and um, but this is where data analysts come in because sometimes they um, they want to use the SIVA layer for a more refined data set that still retains detailed information necessary for in-depth analysis by the data analyst and the data scientists also have use cases here because they might want to build models and perform advanced analytics and this is where they can go to the SIVA layer and sort of do that from there and that brings us to the final layer which is the gold layer and this is where data is fully refined and prepared for analytics or the dashboard you're building or ML models the, the good layer is quite an interesting one because it's where you will find the data model for reporting and analytics um, using dimensional model by establishing different relationships and defining all of the measures. Analysts with access to data in gold should be able to um, find domain specific data and answer questions. And because this is the whole goal of the whole data journey, by the way. So because the gold layer models a business domain, what some organizations do is that they try to create um, multiple gold layers to meet different business needs. For instance, you could have the HR, they want their own business layer and you have the finance team and the IT team, they just want their own domain within the gold layer. Additional tasks you could also do within the gold layer is that most engineers try to do aggregation for key metrics and for instance total sales and average and customer spending it helps with the analyst downstream either building dashboard or using it for report performance and optimization is another thing that is done here things like partitioning and indexing it tries to help with quick recovery and query responses and in terms of usage this is what i've talked about already this layer is used mostly by the business analysts and business developers most importantly is the fact that executives and decision makers they use this and finally you could have the operational team coming to this layer to want to take data directly from there. So let's quickly talk about the example of a medallion architecture. I just got this from the Microsoft documentation and uh, when you look at it here, Microsoft tries to say that this example of a medallion architecture shows the bronze, silver and gold layers for use by business operations team and each layer is stored in a different schema of the ops catalog. 
which is something you could see here. And so when the data comes in, like cloud storage from Kafka, Salesforce, this is the external data source. It could just be anything. It could have more sources. They come into the bronze layer and the schema is the bronze. And you can see the customer raw, transaction raw, account raw, opportunity calls, lead raw. And when the data comes to the silver layer, this is where data cleansing and validation takes place. And for instance, customer and transaction records undergo a process to eliminate no entries and quarantine invalid data. Clean customer data and transaction data is now merged into what you have here as the customer transactions. And this is very, very useful for data scientists in their tasks, such as predictive modeling. And when you come down, similarly, you have the data coming from Salesforce and opportunity information is kind of consolidated to the account opportunities. And you see the lead draw also gets cleaned, so it becomes the leads clean on this layer and stored here. And when it's done with this place, it goes to the gold layer. The gold layer designed primarily for business users. Um, this layer has fewer tables compared to the silver. And examples include the customer spending, which is which is here, and you have the account performance, and they are kind of consolidated into the business summary. And from the lead cleaned, you have the sales pipeline summary. The sales pipeline summary offers an overview of the entire sales pipeline. And business summary presents heavily aggregated data that is well suited for executive review. Well, that was a very good example and very useful one. And that brings us to the point of best practices because we need to know what is the best practice when implementing the medallion architecture. And I'm going to be listing a couple of best practices as recommended by Databricks and Microsoft. The first is layer by layer security. So here's the deal. When setting up your lake house, it's crucial to establish clear boundaries for each medallion layer. Many team creates separate schemas or catalog for bronze, silver, and gold. With these distinct zones in place, you can precisely control who can read, write, or alter data at each layer. For instance, you have the data engineers who might have right access to bronze and silver layers, while only a select group of analytics professionals have the right to publish or update gold data. To do this, you could, you might want to leverage the Azure AD or just any other centralized identity solutions to ensure that only the authorized users can make changes at each stage of the pipeline, which is very, very good if you want to ensure that level of security across your layers. And that brings us to the second point about governance and compliance. The thing about data is that it grows quickly. So as the data volume grows, so does the complexity of compliance. It's typically advisable to tag or label data sets based on how sensitive they are. For example, you have the PII data, the personally identifiable information or financial data. You can then configure security policies around this tag to enforce um, row level security or column level encryption and we are needed. Just decide what works best for you and your organization you represent. Comprehensive audit logs are also must-haves and they help answer questions like who made these changes um, to this data set, when was it made and what is the main reason why these changes were made? And this level of transparency is invaluable for regulatory standards, um, such as GDPR or any other regulators you need to please. The third point is sustained data quality. And this is a very good best practice. And because high quality data should be a non-negotiable priority if you are setting up the medallion architecture. One approach is to implement the automated validation rules directly into your data pipelines, checking for schema conformance, null fields or unexpected data patterns. When records fail these checks, it's best to kind of quarantine them in a separate error table um, for further review rather than discarding them entirely. You could use tools like the data live tables and data breaks can help formalize these data quality checks and also ensure that each of the data sets that you have meet the minimum standards before moving to the next layer. The fourth, of course, you can talk about this without talking about performance and optimization. Because when you start scaling at scale, um, performance can 
quickly become a bottleneck and a few proven techniques as recommended is what almost everybody have also suggested in different reviews and papers I've read is partitioning tables by high cardinality fields um, like date or region which can help speed up queries by allowing engines like Spark to skip partitions that aren't relevant. Additionally, you could also consider using auto-scaling clusters so you are not constantly paying for unused compute. The advantage of this is that this way the system ramps up capacity during heavy workloads like a batch ingestion that you need to do and just to get everything in and then scales back down during off peak periods when it's really not being called and not in use. The fifth one is monitoring and observability. You just want to have a, a view, an overview of what is happening across board. So maintaining a robust medallion architecture means that you continuously try to track the pipeline to see the health of the pipeline. So it's recommended to set up a dashboard to monitor load times, error rates, throughput or resource utilization and um, the CPU memory. Um, you can also integrate alerting tools um, into any platform your developers use regularly, it could be Slack, it could be Teams, and just to notify your team if any job fails or if data freshness falls behind the expected schedule. And um, regular log reviews can also help you spot patterns or when things go wrong, the anomalies that could signal very much deeper issues like upstream data source problems or somebody tries to maliciously assess your environment. The sixth is what every stakeholder is interested in is cost management. Finally, we can talk about this cost. Um, cost efficiency is a critical piece of data strategy across board and selecting right size compute clusters to match your job complexities. It first ensures that only, you only pay for the resources you genuinely need. Another common best practice is auto is auto terminating idle clusters or scheduling them to shut down during off peak period is an excellent way to avoid unnecessary cloud expenses. We are available. You could also opt for spot instances and preemptible resources for non-critical tasks like development or testing. What this does is that it helps to reduce costs without impacting your production workload. Hopefully, by following these best practices from security, governance, data quality, and optimization, monitoring, and cost control, you, you will be able to create a medallion architecture that's not only technically robust, but also aligns with business needs and, of course, your budget. Well, and that brings us to the end of this video. If this video has helped you understand why the bronze, silver, and gold layers are so essential, why don't you consider subscribing for more deep dives into modern data engineering? Hopefully, I'll do more of these videos to kind of explain how the modern architecture has been implemented across businesses and your data needs. And if you have any questions or feedback, why not? You could drop them on the comment section and see you in my next video. Bye for now.